Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share tips and advice about their industry. And today I'm happy to announce that I have Larry. Larry, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for being here. Sure. Pre appreciate it. Sure. Why don't you explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay. Um, I am a certified mentor with a national organization known as SCORE and we're a volunteer organization and we work with small business owners to try to help them be successful in effect. Okay. So if someone's going to start a business, obviously they need to have a business plan. How does a, a small business or someone who's thinking about starting a business get started with that? Well, I mean, uh, if you can just Google small business plan online and you'll have, you know, maybe 10 or 15 opportunities to look at different business plans. Really, it boils down to two items. One is marketing and the other is finance. So <clears throat> let's look at the marketing side, for example. The marketing is, I have a product that I'm selling, what makes my product unique? You know, I have competition for that product. Why do I, se how do I separate myself from the competition? So that's really the issue of, you know, marketing an idea or marketing an actual physical product. Okay. The other side would be then the finance. How, how much money does it cost me to make the product or how, how does it cost, how much money does it cost me to sell the product? Let's say it's even an internet uh, product. How do I do all the design work and how do I do all the work, you know, necessary to make my site attractive to someone to, to look at it? So those are the two basic areas. Finance to be able to support yourself while you're designing and selling your product and a unique product on the other side to make sure that people are interested in buying it. Okay. So let's talk about financing a little bit. Um, I know there are small businesses, but then there might be even smaller business than small business. You know, someone who just opens up their doors, um, working out of their home, deciding to um, sell a service or whatnot. So are you, would you suggest that they get a line of credit and then when times are lean, they pull out of that or pull, pull money for, out of that to survive or, or give some, um, your thoughts on that? Sure. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, traditionally, uh, small businesses are generally undercapitalized. When they open their door, they only think about the, the higher point of their sales forecast rather than the lowest point. And, and they're surprised if the business doesn't come in and they don't have the, the ability to keep open, in effect. So I would suggest in a traditional way, small business owners can support themselves during, we call these cash flow shortfalls, where funds are not available uh, at the moment to keep yourself in a steady beat then a line of credit from a bank would be very helpful. Uh, and the line of credit would be used only as you needed it. And in some cases, used when you don't need it. Okay. I would like to just kind of skip over to pricing now. Um, and as far as, uh, you know, I, I know in a, you know, nowadays you can go on, on the internet and you can find out what your competition's pricing is and whatnot. But how do you know, say if your competition is charging X amount and then you want to charge that much more, and how do you know if your services are actually worth that much? Well, you know, your price, as I said before, you generally underprice your services as a small business owner uh, only to get the business. And that's not really the key. I mean, you can't live on lower end pricing forever because you'll just go out of business. So there has to be a value added to your service. Even if your competition, let's say, is charging X and you want Y, there has to be something in an addition that you can offer them. For example, suppose you'd like to get the product out to them quicker than your competition does. Let's say you can deliver that product within 72 hours and the competition takes two weeks. Well, there's your advantage right there and you should get paid for that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've heard it said where, uh, you know, when you, when you mail something, you usually have three ways to, to pay. You can do standard, which is generally free. You got second day air or you got overnight. Right, exactly. It's the same thing. And there are other nuances that you can build into your product, which your competition doesn't have. And you'll know that you'll by going on their internet site, you'll know exactly what kind of service that they offer. And, you know, that's your opportunity to shine. And if it's just only Let's say if your competition charges $150 for a service, perhaps you can get that $200 or $225 by offering just a little bit more of a concierge kind of face-to-face -face individualized service where you actually call the client and, and are related to them you know, verbally rather than through an email design. Okay, great. Very good information. I appreciate it. And hopefully all of you out there enjoyed it as well. 
If you'd like more information about Larry and his company SCORE, please check out the website at the end of this video. And if you'd like to continue the conversation online, please do so by filling out the box below. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, take care.